The entire British Royal Navy had joined the hunt for Bismarck, the pride of the Kriegsmarine. HMS Rodney was one of the many ships among them. On May 27, 1941, Rodney spotted the German battleship and commenced to engage her with the support of HMS King George V. A furious salvo exchange followed between the rival vessels. Bismarck scored no hits, but Rodney hit her twice during the third salvo, disabling the lower turret and the bridge. Exposed to more attacks from the Colossus, Rodney rushed toward the enemy and opened fire at point-blank range. She fired full broadsides and launched three torpedoes to sink Bismarck for good. But the fight was not over yet. It would take more to vanquish Europe's biggest ship. Forged in fire and steel, HMS Rodney was a Nelson-class battleship ordered in 1922 by the British Royal Navy. It was a scaled-down battleship version of the G-3 battle cruiser that was cancelled due to the restrictions of the Washington Naval Treaty. Rodney displaced over 34,000 long tons, had an overall length of 216 meters, a beam of 32 meters, and a draft of 9 meters. Her design was focused on a main armament of three triple 16-inch guns, or 406-millimeter guns, to match the power of the Japanese Nagato and American Colorado classes. Secondary armament comprised 12 Mark 23 guns in twin-gun turrets and anti-aircraft armament to deter enemy fighters, encompassing six Mark 8 guns and eight QF two-pounder guns in single mounts. Two submerged torpedo tubes complemented the ship's firepower. HMS Rodney was manned by a crew of 1,361 officers and powered by eight Admiralty three-drum boilers providing 45,000 horsepower through two geared turbines and two shafts. Rodney had a top speed of 23 knots, or 43 kilometers per hour, and a maximum range of 7,000 nautical miles while traveling at 16 knots. Her armor ranged from 14 inches of thickness at the waterline to 3 and 6 inches at the deck. The armor from the gun turrets and barbettes was between 9 and 16 inches thick. Before the beginning of World War II, she was fitted with a catapult and collapsible crane to hoist aircraft alongside a prototype T-79Y early warning radar system. The Hunt for the Bismarck By the time Great Britain was at war with the Third Reich, HMS Rodney was ready for combat with upgraded armament to fight the might of the Kriegsmarine head-on. German U-boats and warships were ravaging Allied Atlantic convoys, including the colossal battleship Bismarck, the world's largest and most modern European battleship and a force of nature. Realizing the danger German commerce raiders posed to the British war effort, the British Admiralty decided to hunt them down individually. In early January 1941, Rodney joined the hunt to sink Scharnhorst and Gneisenau. On May 24th, she joined the hunt for Bismarck after the battleship sank battlecruiser Hood during the Battle of Denmark Strait. This time, the Royal Navy unleashed all its might to take down the beast, no matter the cost. Overall, more than 20 British warships were involved in the pursuit. After being detected and attacked by a swarm of British swordfish aircraft, King George V and Rodney approached Bismarck at 8.30 a.m. on May 27th. After the furious initial salvos between the three vessels, Rodney knocked out Bismarck's forward superfiring turret and hit her bridge. Taking advantage of the chaos, Rodney rushed the damaged battleship and began firing at point-blank range. Not content with that, she launched three torpedoes, one of which allegedly struck Bismarck, turning her into the only battleship that torpedoed another. Rodney's effort crippled Bismarck and forced her crew to scuttle the ship, putting the Colossus to rest. But there was more to come for the Nelson-class battleship. Storming the Atlantic HMS Rodney soon became a stalwart of the Atlantic convoys, protecting vital supply lines against German U-boats and surface raiders. She operated in treacherous waters, infested with audacious enemy submarine crews that silently stalked their prey whenever possible. During a convoy escort mission to Malta as part of Operation Halberd, she successfully escorted two carriers and unfortunately also took down a ferry Fulmer fighter accidentally. In May 1942, she escorted convoy WS-19 bound for Burma, she made way for Malta again to prevent the island from falling into the hands of the Axis during Operation Pedestal. On August 10th, Rodney was sighted by Italian reconnaissance aircraft when passing through the Strait of Gibraltar and had to endure an attack from bomber aircraft. During the ambush, HMS Eagle was sunk by German submarine U-73. 
Two days later, Rodney was swarmed by Regia Aeronautica torpedo bombers and the deafening Junkers Ju-87 Stuka dive bombers. Her guns successfully fended off the attackers, but one armor-piercing bomb made its way through and wounded four crewmen. Though Rodney's evasive maneuvers were effective, they led to steering problems, forcing her to return to Scapa Flow for repairs. There, her crew trained for the Allied invasion of Africa, and the vessel was later honored by a visit from Prime Minister Winston Churchill before her departure with Force H. Mediterranean Campaign The main objective of Operation Torch was to secure French North Africa with a three-pronged attack on Algiers, Oran, and Casablanca. U.S. forces were ready for their baptism of fire against the Wehrmacht and the Italian military. Rodney and Force H were tasked with covering fire for the landings at Oran and Algiers in early November 1942. Rodney engaged the four powerful 194mm coast defense guns of Fort du Santon overlooking the harbor at Oran. Surprisingly, she received no reply from the French defenses. Following the capitulation of Vichy, France, Rodney remained in the Mediterranean until May 1943, when she started preparations for Operation Husky, the invasion of Sicily. Rodney and Force H attacked Axis coastal guns near Reggio de Calabria in early September 1943, before Allied ships crossed the Strait of Messina. The ship also provided support during the Salerno landings, clearing the skies of enemy aircraft. With the landings on southern Europe, the Allied troops began to slowly reclaim the Italian peninsula in preparation for the invasion of Normandy, northern France. The liberation of Europe began to take shape. Fire and Thunder Operation Overlord was launched on June 6, 1944. Rodney was in reserve for the invasion, but the circumstances led her to join the fray and attack enemy shore batteries and coastal defenses near Le Havre. Later, Rodney was dispatched to support friendly troops that had landed at Sword Beach. In the chaos of battle, Rodney was responsible for a friendly fire incident against a landing craft that carried 13 crewmen, all of whom were lost. Once order was established at sea, Rodney opened fire against the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitlerjungend north of Kane. She fired over 230 rounds of 16 and 6 inch ammunition. In 1960, British naval historian Captain Stephen Roskill wrote about Rodney's remarkable June 30th mission against German tanks and troops on their way to attack Allied troops. He wrote, quote, Rodney astonished the Germans by planting her 16-inch shells squarely on tanks which were massing for a counterattack 17 miles inland from the gold beaches. Again and again did such ships earn the warm appreciation of the soldiers, and the frequent lamentations of the German army commanders also testify to the effectiveness of the naval gunfire. Roskill also wrote that after being captured, a German soldier said, quote, We'll fight you, we'll fight your tanks, but those naval guns are too much. Rodney's crew was probably pleased to hear that, assuring them of their support for the success of Operation Overlord. Throughout July, the ship continued bombarding land targets, tearing apart more enemy panzers as part of Operation Windsor to ease the load on Canadian forces. HMS Rodney continued to support Commonwealth troops through Operation Charnwood in their push to reconquer Kane. Rodney gladly provided more long-range artillery to decimate the enemy. Legacy of the Steel Titan Once the Anglo-American and French forces established their foothold in France, Rodney made way for the Cotentin Peninsula. The Wehrmacht had occupied Alderney, the northernmost Channel Island, 15 kilometers to the west of La Hague. These forces were disrupting the shipping of Allied troops in northern France. The British ship arrived at the location and wasted no time bombarding German battery emplacements on August 12th. She maneuvered successfully, avoiding being hit by German return fire. In the following skirmish, Rodney's crew fired more than 70 16-inch shells, knocking out one of the four guns and damaging the others. After receiving some damage, the vessel stopped for a quick repair at Portland. When she was once more fit for battle, Rodney was sent to escort a convoy bound for Murmansk in the Soviet Union. With the help of Soviet vessels, the convoy's escort fleet sunk one German U-boat at the cost of merchant ships. Even with the losses, the mission was counted as a success, as losing a submarine at that late stage of the war was an irreparable loss for the Kriegsmarine. After her return to British territorial waters, Rodney became the home fleet flagship under Admiral Sir Henry Moore. This distinction was her final assignment and marked the end of the ship's illustrious career. In December 1945, Rodney was docked at Roseth, 
where she remained until March 1948, before finally sailing to Inverkeithing, Scotland, to be scrapped. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Skies channel to discover more exciting content about Royal Navy operations during World War II. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos.